Give you maggots and scatter fragments all over your finer fabrics. I don't believe in magic, only in mathematics. Bullets and automatics and medicine for these addicts. Hey guys, welcome to Camilo's Notebooks of Mathematical Proofs and Ideas. That's still the tentative title, it's a working title. I'm too lazy to come up with a cooler, better name for the channel. And just honestly, I don't care enough. But what I do care about is the math. And today I have a short video for you. Short and sweet and pretty elementary. It's just a really cool way of thinking about the factorization of polynomials. The geometric interpretation in particular. For example, let p of x, just this quadratic polynomial. The whole point is we're, we're going to describe this polynomial as, a, as an area. Well, first of all, because this polynomial is degree 2. So degree 2 means it's got dimension 2, and so it's measuring area. And for the moment, we're going to talk about positive distances in order to imagine this. We need x to be a positive number. And the most important part, we need to fix what our unit will be. So whether you're measuring in miles, inches, anything, whatever line segment you consider to be uh, your unit of one, that defines everything, including all these x's, everybody. Because if you want to define two, it's just two of these. This two. If you want to define three, that's just three of these. If you want to define any x, well, that's just a hash mark on this Thing, and this is, of course, extending to both sides. This is the real line. Uh, so, so but the important part is we need to define our unit. The unit length is what we call it. And from the unit length, you put, you square it, and you get the unit area, which is a one by one square, just like you see here. So this is our unit length. This is our unit square, unit area. Since our polynomials of degree two again, uh, the degree of p was two, uh, we need to measure everything in areas. So if this is one and x, just say it's this length, any length, but I need it as an area, I'm gonna multiply it by one. So put a one right here and make the rectangle. So that's what I do. So x as a length is this, but x as an area, is a 1 by x a rectangle which is what is the area of this rectangle it's exactly 1 times x or x times 1 so that's x but as an area really all we're doing is multiplying by 1 nothing but it, it's for the conceptual part and then if this length is x to square it so I'll go back to x if this length is x to square it we put a little square like that where this length is the same as this length and that's what we call x squared this the area of this is x by x area x squared so now using these areas these kind of lego blocks uh they're gonna be our two-dimensional lego blocks from which we build combinations and then factorization will just be special ways of using the same Lego blocks to construct nice rectangular shapes. So again, I chose one of the easiest polynomials here because hopefully the point to get across, maybe I'll do a three dimensional one and it resorts to having to draw cubes. But uh, for the moment, again, let P of X be uh, X squared plus five X plus six. You could verify directly. This is the factorization. This polynomial factors is X plus two times X plus three. But how? I mean, they teach you tons of algebraic ways. Oh, I need two numbers to multiply to six and to add to five. That's one way to get it. They teach you the algebraic tricks. I'm here to tell you is the geometric interpretation. Geometric interpretation is way nicer in terms of understanding what's really going on. And so let's just look at this very simple example. So just going back to our units that we're using here, every x looks like this, every x squared looks like this, every unit of one or two or three or f looks like this. So if this is our polynomial, then I'm gonna also color code them for the moment so you can just see them. I'm just drawing a yellow. This is an x by x square, 
represented by x squared. But then I have 5x. That's five of the rectangles that have length the same x but have a width of one. So each of these is one, but I have five of them. So the area of this whole thing is five by x, or x by five is five x. And then six, we know what our unit is. Our unit was that one by one square. You know, it's, if this is one, draw one right here. That would be the length of six, but here it is drawn down. Uh, one by six. And so now consider these your Lego blocks. How can I rearrange these to make a more symmetrical shape? And in this case, one, we want to make this into a rectangle, into a nice rectangle. And the rectangle also is the factorization. We're going to watch a quick 15 second clip of me putting the pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle. I won't even finish the last step of the last six. You should see the corner where they will go. In any case, uh, the final product, the final, the final configuration of our uh, using our Lego blocks in the left hand side gives us the right hand side. This rectangle, which is as on the top edge, it's x and two, so it's x plus two long, and on the right edge or left edge on the the height is x long and then three units long so in total it's x plus three units long hence the left hand side which is x squared plus f 5x plus 6 indeed factors geometrically as you see here color coded and everything uh, it factors as x plus 2 times x plus 3. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you can see how this generalizes to all types of factorizations. Um, not just for quadratics, but in higher dimensions for cubics and quartics and etc. Uh, well, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this and probably of more interesting stuff hopefully i hope to get to euler's identity maybe show you some of my research on symmetric spaces and also hope maybe we'll read some of your comments and you guys can request some stuff you would like to see till next time have a good night